and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Nyambura and this is 100 books. Today I'm going to be talking about four books that I read over the past week. Correction, that I finished over the last week. And as usual, I'll be talking about them from the one that was published earliest to the one that was published most recently. I'll list them down below in the order in which I finished them. But yeah, I'll talk about them in the order in which they were published. The first book I'll talk about is The Break by Katarina Vermette, narrated by Michaela Washburn. And this book is set in Canada. And in the inciting incident, like the thing that starts the story, is that a young mother witnesses a crime, calls the police, and is disregarded by one of the policemen, but the other one pays some attention to what she's saying and makes that sort of like a thing that's animating his police practice so to speak um she is of indigenous descent as is he and that we are made to feel is like some sort of bond between the two of them and afterwards we find out who the victim is and some of the circumstances leading up to the crime the really heinous crime so i should just mention you know like massive trigger warning for sexual assault and also like physical abuse and just some less than great family dynamics going on here. At the very heart of the story is this woman's family, the one who witnessed the crime. Um, it's a very matriarchal family. I think there are maybe four or five men who are mentioned, but very tangentially for a host of reasons, men don't feature in this family. And so it's their grandmother, um and then her daughters and her granddaughters and the few great grandchildren that there are including this one this girls this lady's children um and so we the story moves pretty fast over time but we also have some flashbacks and we also get some people recounting some events in the past that really give us a sense of how canada as a country but also the Canadian state treats uh, people who are of indigenous descent. And um, it really, it was really eye-opening for me in a lot of ways, despite the fact that, yeah, I follow a number of um, indigenous Canadians on Twitter and I pay attention to a number of can uh people and Canadian booktubers and so on. Uh, but there's something very visceral about this story. The way it comes together especially is really heartbreaking. But there's also so much hope in the way it's told. And um, yeah, I think for me, one of those big things was how love can really redeem people. But also the fact that there are so many tensions that come from historical issues and uh, that they need to be addressed. And it's not going to be a tidy process, but it's going to be worthwhile, that's for sure. The writing, there are some times when you're just like, mm, girl, this is a bit too convenient. But that's a lot of writing, sorry. I guess the stiff was again. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's, it's very much um, a story that is of itself, if that makes sense. So for instance, it's a character who is never directly named, but we on on pretty fast to who she is and she's speaking like from the afterlife and it just is woven in so beautifully but on the other hand for instance the crime that's at the heart of this story is not is not given like the place i imagine it would be given if that makes sense for instance the survivor victim if you will of the crime is barely given any room like she gets more airplay before the crime than after the crime and for me it was a bit like the girl who's at the center of the crime i felt deserved more time even if only just to explore some of her sentiments and what she's going through during what is obviously a really really tough time um but yeah, as I said, really great writing. I definitely intend to read more of Womet's writing. And yeah, just to see what that 
um, indigenous experience is like in Canada and to have it written with so much heart and so much care that was really valuable then um, the next book I'll talk about is No One Can Pronounce My Name by Rakesh Satyal which was narrated by Amol Shah just to go back to the break I listened and read I mean like I listened to the break and also uh, listened to it so it was the only one of these books I'm going to talk about today that was a blended read slash where I looked at print. For whatever reason, this week has just been... Hey! This is a total detour. Usually I'd say this at the end, but I intended to only read physical books this week. And that has happened, but not insofar as I can discuss any book that and do I feel aware about it? Yes. Have I interrupted regular programming to talk about it? Yes. Do I intend to go back to what I was about to say? Also yes. But I don't know. It is what it is, I guess, you know. Uh, so back to the second book. No One Can Pronounce My Name by Rakesh Satyal and narrated by Amol Shah. This book follows two main characters um, and the people around them. But our main characters are Harit, whose sister Swati recently passed away and he's living with his mother and he's engaged in this uh, daily practice to confound his mother into thinking that Swati is still alive. Not knowing that his mother uh, also has things going on in her life that she's not talking about with him. So, you know, that just that theme of secrecy um, and the fact that both of them are living these double lives and they don't have in their family at an, an atmosphere of openness and you know like disclosure um, it makes for very interesting moments to be honest and then the other person is Ryan hey my notes are horrible uh, but I remember what happened and her son Prashant has just left for university he's gone off to Princeton and now she is free in a way she hasn't been since she moved to the US really and she gets a job she has this life outside of her family that is quite rich she's in a writing group she makes friends with this gay man who sort of like introduces her to a bunch of other people and then her life and her Ritz life intersect and so you sort of like really gain speed from that point so we um have see what the indian american experience is like from the viewpoints of these two people whose lives are not similar because harit and prana are why am i prana prana I'm going to put her name here because I feel like I've totally mangled it and I'm going to hell because the name of this book is literally no one can pronounce my name. <laughs> but uh, their lives are, are so different. Like she is class, like she's like middle class. Her husband is a college professor. She's educated. Um, her kid has gone off to an Ivy League college, etc. He didn't even go to university. He works in a retail shop and so on. Um... And so, but they get enough points of meeting for them to become fast friends and for him to get room within their friendship to explore certain parts of his identity. For both of them actually to explore certain parts of their identity. It ends really beautifully and it was also just a really charming and kind portrayal of the lives of immigrants. Like the, all the different paths that they could take, but also all the chances people have for kindness for generosity um and so on i mean obviously there are times when it's like mm, this is too convenient besties but why is the book i have written <laughs> for me so they hating uh and uh the, all of these threads i especially loved how sexuality was explored from a variety of angles that i think sometimes it's easy to flatten the lgbtqia plus uh, experience and for you to be like yes this is what it's like to be gay but this intersectional view of what it's like to be queer you know to be 
older and queer to be an immigrant and queer to be a person of color in a majority white place and queer to be living in the afterlife of the HIV crisis at least in some parts of the world in some other parts of the of the world the HIV crisis is always already present uh and what that means in terms of being a queer person yeah that was really interesting so yeah that was book two and then book three was a psalm for the wild built by becky chambers narrated by emmett grossland this is a really short sf story it's the first of a duology and it features an nb uh, monk who called dex who is going through like a period of um like an existential crisis it feels like when they encounter a robot called Mosca. My friends, my handwriting is so bad. I write down things and I still can't read them. <laughs> Why do I bother? Just type things up. Um. Anyway, and so um, Dex is going through a period of an existential crisis, as I've mentioned, and they encounter Mosca and Moscap's like, hey, you know, are you down for me to come along with you on this trip you're making? And homie's like, well, I guess. And it's just so wholesome. It's really short, so I don't even know what to talk about and what not to talk about. But between the two of them, they get to learn what it's like to be human. Because Moscap's assignment really is to figure out what it is to be human. And they get to learn what it is to be human, but also to ask these questions around ethics and consent and care and um what it means to be present um for each other what it means to show up for each other what friendship means what what all these cultural ideas we have accepted over time because we've never had occasion to question them uh mean it was just really cute like there's just something about a participant observer as as we call them in anthropology, who is not human and who comes in with this sense of like such pure, not quite innocence, but curiosity. And it was just really charming. Uh, my friend MJ and also Dawn have both really enjoyed this book. And that's a huge part of the reason I picked it up. And it was well worth it, honestly. The last book I'll talk about is Admissions, A Memoir Surviving Boarding School by Kendra James, which was narrated by Mela Lee. Um, this is a memoir, obviously it's the title, um, of Kendra James's time at the Taft School, which is uh, an exclusive co-ed boarding school in um, the US. And... She talks about race, she talks about how, you know, a school like Taft, but similar schools are implicated in, you know, like unconscious and conscious bias, how they expect that um, essentially the kids of color, but especially black kids will be grateful for attending these schools and then turn around and are surprised when they don't want to be involved in school related activities afterwards. But she also talks about her work after college where she worked for organizations whose job was to recruit kids of color to go to these schools that were passively and sometimes aggressively racist and that particular tension i do not treat boarding schools okay like i went to boarding school in high school and i hated <laughs> most of the experience and it really resonated with me because Kendra acknowledges, for instance, that there are opportunities that came to her only because she was in boarding school. I can say that for a fact, like, I did sports, for instance, because I went to boarding school. Like, I do not come from the sort of family where we were going to, where I was going to be enrolled into, like, a hockey program or a football program or something like that. Soccer, to the Americans watching this. Uh, but on the other hand, um, it's sometimes a really high price to pay. And strangely, while I was reading this book, this was a conversation that was going on amongst people who I went to high school with on Facebook. And for a bunch of us to be able to say, hey, you know, some of us still have nightmares to this day that have to do with things that happened when we were 14, 15, 18 at the oldest. 
and we're in our thirties now in our late twenties and so on and so forth and it's ridiculous honestly not that the story is ridiculous but that these experiences are normalized is ridiculous and i think um yeah the story was of course very american like it came from a very american place but it as i said it resonated a lot and it of course also had to do with these notions of black respectability that your goal is to be and i think this also is told true where i am which is in africa that your goal is to be accepted by the sort of institutions that do not actually want you like certain white institutions a lot of white institutions are white because they don't want people of color and what does it mean to essentially not participate in these spaces um yeah it's always really hard to talk about memoirs because it's like this is someone's life uh but i really enjoyed it i took a break from memoirs for a while because sometimes i would bring up like really strong feelings but i'd be looking forward to this and i remember actually when she talked about its upcoming release on twitter i was like oh i'm gonna put this on hold it's, it's, this was really excited to finally read it and just think along with it that's about it i feel like there was something i really wanted to talk about <laughs> which i do not remember now like wow besties yeah i think i think um just to wrap this up um i have as i say been struggling to read physical books I am currently listening and reading, um, listening to and reading Seven Days in the Art World. Um, I'll put it up here. It's quite the experience. I'll talk about it next week, definitely, because I know I'll be done this weekend. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm trying as much as possible to be kind to myself like i've been really exhausted <laughs> all weekend there's just something calming about being able to go for a walk or to just you know lie on your bed or make your meal and so on and listen to a book that you don't get when you have to sit down and look at text and yeah i mean i have read four books as my mom pointed out in a previous video <laughs> like sometimes we talk by we, I mean people on booktube uh, will be like, oh, I barely read anything, I read two books. And it's like, bestie, you read, you know? So I'm talking to myself here, yeah. So I hope you have a lovely weekend if you're watching this or when I put it up on the Saturday. And, and or I hope you're having a good time whenever you watch this. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and all the good things. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.